This podcast is brought to you by the Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania. Well, we're just over a month till the presidential election and the markets today reacting to that announcement that President Trump and First Lady Melania Trump have contracted the coronavirus. But how will the markets be impacted in general over the next month with this component? No coronavirus relief bill yet. Many other factors in play. Tom Meyer, CEO of Meyer Capital Group, joining us on the line. Tom, great to talk to you again. Hope you're doing well. Hi, Dan. Thanks uh, for asking me to be on today. Um, just chalk this up to the year of 2020. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think a lot of people are going to be ready for 2021 to get here. Uh, so give us your your thoughts on what you think we might see with, with the markets over the next month. I mean, you have so many things at play, and, and unfortunately, not a lot of them are positive. No, I, you know, believe this or not, I mean, um, as you were just uh, talking about, this, this puts stimulus front and center as the market was selling off. Uh, this morning, how you had uh, uh, touched upon, you know, over, down over four and a plus points, and and the market has rallied after there were uh, some comments from um, Speaker Pelosi, uh, sounding a bit more optimistic. All of a sudden, you know, the, the market snapped back, and and I think the market right now is focusing on that um, that this situation with both the unemployment numbers not being as as robust as they thought, along with Trump. Um, uh, getting uh, being tested positive, all of a sudden now the stimulus looks to be. The odds are that we will be getting something uh, sooner rather than later. What advice are you giving to your clients right now about the the, the investment landscape, which obviously is you know is it's something you're talking about with them all the time, but this is a very unique period uh, right now that we're going through. Oh, for sure. There, there, you know, again, uncertainty, uncertainty, uncertainty. And there's a lot of emotions uh, out there um, daily when we can obviously focus on the volatility of the, of the stock market. So I think it's very important, again, to remember what your investment objectives are and your risk tolerance. And um, the fact that more than likely your portfolio uh, is going to be a little bit top-heavy in large-cap growth because of, of the incredible uh, moves that we've seen in the past months. So it might not be a bad time to go ahead and scrape a little bit, rebalance and reallocate, which is always uh, something that should be done, um, at least by year end, and maybe even a little bit sooner before uh, the election. Um, and if you focus on the election, look, in 2016, look what happened. I mean, the, the, the futures were down after Trump was uh, reelected, uh, excuse me, reelected, elected. <clears throat> and uh, it turned out that the market uh, was up uh, the day after the election. Um, so you never know. Uh, it pays to be safe, obviously, and it pays to, to, to be able to, for you to sleep at night. Each one has a different story. Uh, each one has a different risk tolerance. And um, for our clients, we naturally rebalance uh, at least uh, once a quarter. So we're always scraping a little bit uh, from what's uh, been working and going to things that obviously maybe are a little bit undervalued here. And I think you have to stick to that. Um, however, there is one thing you have to look at, and history is um, – if, if you look, look back in history, if there is a democratic tribe factor, okay, on average, we've done that six times, I think, since post-World War II, and the market's always been down. Mm -hmm. Since 1984, the day after the election, believe it or not, the market has averaged almost a negative 1% decline. The largest decline was when um, President Obama was elected in 2008. The market dropped 5%. Um, because of that democratic sweep that happened in 2008. Now, remember, just because you have a sweep, just like in 2008, everyone got all um, uh, up in arms because of the tax rates that were going to go up. It didn't happen right away. The economy dictated whether or not taxes were going up. In fact, I believe it wasn't until three years later, or maybe even longer, that uh, President Obama did raise individual taxes because the economic situation was so unstable. Sure. You can take that to the bank that if this does happen and you have a democratic sweep, in, my, in our opinion, that it's not going to happen overnight of, of, of taxes going up. Because if it does happen, you will have Individual investors thinking right off the bat that my taxes are going to go up, which will put pressure on the market the day after the election. We could see a similar situation of what we saw in 2008, no doubt. 
Yeah, and, and obviously with the coronavirus the way it is still right now, and you know, it probably going to be early 2021 before we see anything really move in terms of getting the the uh, vaccine out there. Uh, really, I don't I don't think if you had a democratic sweep, it, it's just not a scenario where you know, a then President Biden would want to make a move like that because that would just add that uncertainty and that shock back into even more so into the system. That's that's right. And and as in 2008, it was about the economy and the economy dictated uh, the, the, uh, the, the fact that you couldn't make taxes right away. And to your point, now we have the virus along with the economy. And the fact is the virus is the only Thing that knows what the heck is going to happen, and if if we don't get that uh, vaccine until late 2021, there's a good chance that you're going to go through 2021 um, with maybe another stimulus on top of the one that we may have now, and yeah. and really uh, no move on the tax. How how important then, at least in the short term, right now, is it for the market surrounding this announcement of, uh, about President Trump, Melania Trump, and there's even been reports that he actually does have some symptoms. Uh, of there and, and a concern of you know where the government as a unit is going right now. You know it's funny if you go back when LBJ contacted Hong Kong flu, um, and um, of course times were different back then. Uh, he said, I believe he said it was the, sick, the most sick I've ever been in my life. Um, uh, we the markets were volatile, no doubt. And um, we just went on with life, and and of course he was not running uh, for renomination that that year. But if you look at this with with, with President Trump and uh, the fact that he's, he's had some type of symptoms, uh, this is something that we've all as Americans have been living with, right? I mean, yeah. it was very difficult to believe that with all his his campaigning and going out and not wearing masks and what have you, that this wasn't going to happen. So. Yes, you have that knee-jerk reaction, um, and and I, you know, is it going to go through the the, the whole uh, cabinet? I mean, uh, Pence just uh, tested um, uh, not being positive, so I don't think that's even an issue here. I think the market's knee-jerk re- react from the market standpoint of view was was yes, oh my God, Trump, Trump uh, has it, and I think the fact that he will not be campaigning now for two weeks, you know, leads to the fact that maybe Biden will. Be elected president, and quite frankly, when when Biden um, uh, brought on Kamala Harris and not, we'll say Elizabeth Warren, I think that basically placated the market. Yeah. So the market, in my opinion, was 50-50 Biden Trump. It doesn't matter. I think what does matter here, more importantly, is that the market, in my opinion, has not priced in a Republican loss in the Senate. I think they're banking on the Republicans to keep the Senate, and I do not think that's in the market. Tom, great to talk to you as always. Thanks very much. Dan, thank you. Tom Meyer, CEO of Meyer Capital Group. To keep engaged with Wharton Business Daily and other Wharton School shows, visit businessradio.wharton.upenn.edu.